hello everyone, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Piotr Jagielski, it's an honor to be here it's with such a, uh, great speakers. Uh, so I, I work at Talk, it's a software house, uh, house from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, and the title of my talk is the Sequencing Dance Music with Closure. So it's rather not the topic I'm uh, making it at my uh, work, but rather a hobby project. Uh, so a quick survey, maybe, who, who is like familiar with closure syntax? Okay, and who wrote some closure code? And who uh, for do it for money? <laughs> Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, it's not a, a rather a popular language, but uh, so uh, I'm not an, uh, an closure evangelist or someone. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if closure is the good uh, language to program as space shuttle or something, but I just uh, like the ideas and I want to show you uh, the basic ideas and uh, opportunities that this language uh, gi gives you, and especially in this use case that I'm uh, today uh, with, uh, presenting today. Uh, so what um, the main idea that I will try to sell you is so-called uh, ref-driven development. So like uh, other uh, modern languages, Clo Clojure has a built-in REPL, so you can uh, start a console like this and uh, uh, in the context of your project and you just uh, can type a code, it gets evaluated here. Uh, so nothing special, but what makes Clojure different is that this REPL is uh, it expose, uh, exposes a port, so you can easily connect to this running REPL from uh, any other process. So it's really trivial to integrate uh, this REPL from your favorite editor. So you don't longer have to learn Emacs to, to wrote closure code. Uh, I'm using Atom here. Uh, there's also an IntelliJ plugin, uh, but this is uh, a bit light, more lightweight. Uh, so here in this uh, this space, I can also uh, type closure code, and it works exactly the same. Uh, but what it, uh, it but it's not uh, rocket science still. Uh, but what makes it um, uh, more pleasant to uh, work with is that I can just uh, uh, send a piece of a code straight from the editor. So if this is a function definition in Clojure, it just returns some string. So if I evaluate this, uh, it, uh, it is now registered in the REPL. So I can now uh, invoke this function from here. Uh, and it just uh, executes, uh, executes. But what also can I do is uh, I can also invoke this function from uh, straight from this, uh, the editor. So I can uh, uh, have this uh, invocation in, in the text that I'm just editing. And it is much more convenient to edit code, uh, write code in the editor uh, rather than in this small uh, window here. And also what is, uh, what is uh, really uh, helpful is that um, when I change this function and reevaluate uh, re it, it also, when I invoke it a uh, second time, it just re uh, it takes the latest version. So <coughs> yeah, then basically this is how you work with Clojure. You just uh, roll, uh, write some small functions and invoke them. Uh, see what the results are, and so on and so on. Then compose this function, uh, these functions into bigger, bigger pieces of code. And also, you can easily then turn some this rep session into test cases. So I have here um, there's a built uh, test framework. So uh, if I just change the assertion, it fails and it. If it's okay, it just uh, returns true. 
So uh, basically, this is kind of inversion, how you work with traditional languages when you often uh, write a, a test case just to invoke your code. So uh, here you can just invoke your code, you, you just invoke your code uh, constantly and you just write the, the test just for the, the edge cases and for some regression uh, uh, and so <coughs> So you just like uh, writing the test after you wrote the code. And to give you some uh, more re uh, real world example, I have this HTTP client that uh, talks to the GitHub API. So if I invoke here, it should uh, make the real invocation, uh, HTTP request. And you can see that there is uh, a result. And uh, with this example, I want to show another cool property of uh, Clojure is that uh, the idea is to model the world just with built-in data structures. <coughs> so typically in other uh, static type languages, you would have this uh, HTTP request class, HTTP response, and all the fields. Uh, here you just uh, get a map uh, uh, with the with the values, so you just uh, don't uh, have to think what is this class, how I can tra trans trans uh, modify it to meet my requirements, and you just have you can invoke the. Uh, any code just to see what it uh, what it returns, and in uh, uh, in closure the maps are uh, the keys in maps are the special uh, types the keywords, so it's uh, like this uh, colon here, um, and then they have some special properties. For example, they are namespace, so you can have like uh, in Java you can have class with same name in different packages. Here you can have uh, keywords with same names, but in different namespaces, and they are different. And the other property is that uh, you can uh, you can uh, use the keyword in, uh, as in a context of a function. So if you invoke a keyword as a function on a map, it just returns you the value uh, under that key. So in this uh, response, I have this body uh, part here, and if I just invoke it, it just returns <coughs> uh, the body, and so on. I can now get a name from here, and uh, it should uh, give my name. Uh, and also, I want to fight uh, another uh, myth here, because often uh, it is uh, people say that uh, yeah, editing closure is like constantly balancing the parents, and you just all uh, all the time get an error that uh, the parents and are missing. So yeah, this problem has been solved. There is this par infer uh, mode which just uh, does the work for you. So for example, if I comment uh, this code, it will magically uh, close the expression here and so on. So you just doesn't, uh, I don't get these errors anymore. And uh, also what I want to mention here is this arrow, uh, which is a macro. Uh, so Clojure um, has built-in macro su support that r writes you, uh, allows you to rewrite your code. And this arrow is really helpful when you're uh, doing some transformation because Often when you see this code, it's hard to understand what's happening. And uh, with this uh, arrow, it just uh, the, uh, shows the, the order of transformation. So uh, uh, how it works, it just takes an expression, evaluates, and uh, uses the uh, return value as the argument to the next expression. So I have this map here, and if I uh, get this uh, invoke this keyword as a function, it should return a one. And then if I just add two uh, to this, I should get three, and this is exactly what I have here. Okay, so this was this simple short introduction. 
So getting to the main, uh, to the topic of the talk, maybe I will close this. Uh, so just like you are, uh, so I'm mean using this Overtone library, which is a sound synthesis uh, library uh, created by Sam Aaron and Jeff Rose. And it basically, it allows you, just like you define a function in Clojure, you can define an instrument. Uh, I'm not, so this, there is this defins macro, but I'm not going into details of this. I just want to show you the, the, that here. Yeah, you just write a normal closure code. So you have this arrow and uh, basically what's happening here is that uh, we are taking some uh, uh, source of the sound and we apply a filter. So we cut off some of the frequencies. Uh, then we just uh, apply an envelope which um, models how the note should the volume of the note should behave in time. Then we add some stereo, and uh, last there is some distortion effect, uh, like in electric guitar. Uh, so this basically, if you know how the hardware soft, uh, synthesizer uh, work, is basically the same, that you just take the output of one module and use it as an input uh, to another module. Uh, so you can see this uh, here. And uh, yeah, if you have this uh, instrument, we can then uh, just call this instrument as a normal uh, closure function. So it makes some side effect of playing the sounds. The sound. Um, yeah, and well, yeah, we have s uh, this argument uh, here. So the m most important is the frequency, so how uh, is the pitch of the sound, then we have the duration uh, of the note, the amplitude, uh, the cutoff frequency. So we have, we can um, have many arguments and of course if we just change uh, these uh, values we can hear different uh, sounds. Uh, and also the important thing is that here we operate on uh, the, the pitch of the sound in, uh, as a frequency in hertz. And it's not convenient for people to think uh, when you're just writing a, a song. So we have this helper function is here to just use the uh, normal uh, note names and then just convert uh, them to the MIDI, uh, to the MIDI value. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, Overtone is really good at uh, this uh, designing the, the instruments and playing just individual notes, but it lacks some abstractions about, about uh, modeling the melody. There is something called temporal recursion, but it's too much complicated. Uh, so, uh, the correct abstraction, I think, it's... Uh, something that is uh, created in uh, another library. It's uh, called Leipzig. It's created by Chris Ford, and he introduced it at a talk at Strange Loop uh, called Functional Composition. I recommend uh, to uh, seeing that. So the uh, basically the idea is just taking the core closure idea as modeling is uh, at a data structure. So in Leipzig, melody is just a, a sequence, uh, a sequence of notes, you may say. Uh, so each note has this time property, when, should, when, when the note should play, the duration of the note, also the pitch of the note, and uh, the, this part, which just, because in Leipzig you can uh, play different, uh, many different instruments, so we have to specify uh, which uh, uh, instrument this note should play. And this is this part function. And in order to map this to, uh, into an overtone invocation, you just uh, use this um, closure way of polymorphism, which is uh, multi-methods. Uh, so basically, in uh, object-oriented languages, uh, the polymorphism is based on the runtime type of an uh, object. And in Clojure, it can be based on everything. So you just write a function, and mm, 
uh, if the function returns some value, then you just dispatch um, that way. So here, uh, this play node is uh, just a model that it uh, takes this part, and if it equals uh, this uh, da func keyword, it just uh, invokes this instrument that we uh, that I defined here uh, before. So in the e equivalent in Leipzig of this uh, previous sound, it's something <laughs> like this. So it sounds the same, but also. Uh, I can play these three notes here. So it's starting to uh, sound better. Mm. Yeah, but this, this notation is uh, still very verbose, so we have to just uh, manually create these notes, and it's, uh, it takes a lot of code. So we have another abstractions uh, in Leipzig. The first is the scales, uh, the scale nine space, which uh, which is helpful to create a scale. So we have different function in this uh, functions in this scale uh, nine space, and this comp is just a function composition. So it will uh, create another function that is composition of those two functions. Uh, so we can create this G minor scale uh, like this, and uh, it just uh, takes the index of the note of the given scale re and returns this, uh, this note. So I'm, I'm using this find note just to convert it to hu human readable note. So the first note is G, then A, and uh, B flat. I think so uh, if you want just to uh, show all the nodes from that scale. You can do some uh, invoking the map function with composition of th those two, uh, because this range is just creating a sequence from zero to seven. <coughs> and here I'm uh, using this double arrow, uh, which is similar to the single arrow. Uh, but uh, if you look at map uh, documentation, um, you can see that the collection is the last argument, and the single arrow just uh, inserts the expression as the first argument. So this is when the double arrow, so the double arrow takes this expression and inserts it into the last argument here. Uh, and another, and when we can, we we have the scale. We can uh, then use this phrase function. And it uh, just takes two collections, uh, one with this with the indexes of the scale, and the one uh, here is the, the with the durations of the nodes. So maybe I will execute and show you how this works. So the phrase uh, assumes that the nodes are played uh, are played one by uh, another, one after another, just one after. Uh, so if we have this first note of length 2, uh, it will play at time 0 and duration 2, and the next one, because this has uh, duration 2, is at time 2. And also if, if you want a pause here, we can just use a nil, so it create an empty, will, would create an empty note. Yeah, and uh, so we can use this phrase further just to create some complex, more complex melodies. And uh, yeah, here we can just reuse this closure collection library because we are just using plain uh, closure uh, data structures. So this cycle just creates an infinite sequence repeating these elements. So to stop it, we can make this take. So we just uh, take 12 uh, elements, then we just can co concatenate another collections. Uh, so we can just create something uh, that has 15 uh, nodes with this, like, four lines of code. And in order to play that melody, uh, we can, uh, we have to make a few more things. One is to, of course, specify the, the part. With the, the instrument which we should use, so we can we have this all uh, function that just uh, sets for all the nodes the, this instrument as a part. 
Uh, also, we have to convert uh, the pitches back to hertz because this uh, this scale just gives you the MIDI uh, index of the notes. So there is a temperament equal function to do this. Uh, and also, you have to uh, specify the song tempo because these durations are just in no length. So then you have to specify. Uh, what does it mean to have the, to, uh, how long is the one note? Uh, and it's here it's 110 beats per minute. Uh, so if we have this, we can just play the melody. Uh, okay, and taking this idea further, uh, I created uh, another library that is using Leipzig and Overtone underneath. And basically it allows you to play uh, drums. Uh, but it's just using the same, the same uh, idea. So uh, I have a special instrument that is a part beat and it uh, doesn't take the pitch as argument, but uh, this drum. Uh, so it just loads uh, some samples from a specified folder and then allows you to play play this. So it's like... And also you can just create a simple drum pattern. Uh, But it's still uh, uh, also very verbose that you have to specify it uh, this way. So I created a helper functions uh, uh, that just uh, you, you take the individual drums and uh, specify the patterns for the drums. So in this example, the kick is playing every beat. Uh, the snare is playing every odd beat, which is uh, really the most popular in dance music. Uh, yeah, and some other, the hi-hat I have here, some other pattern, so it sounds like this. And also you can just uh, mix the two melodies, so I can take this uh, these beats, uh, uh, from here and uh, just uh, mix it with this uh, phrase we created another with this uh, we created earlier with this with function so it sounds like this But it's no, not the end. Uh, <laughs> so the another thing is that uh, you can have uh, like more complex sa uh, sample support uh, because in beats, uh, when you change the tempo of the song, it just doesn't matter because the drum will, will play. It will sound uh, sound good. But if if we have samples, we have to like. Mm, Prescale it to match the the current uh, uh, tempo of the song, mm, and this is what I have with this uh, homemade sampler. I call it. Uh, so, uh, as in the uh, beats, you, you specify uh, a part a sampler and the name of the sample, but also you specify the uh, current BPM that you want to use, and uh, the. So uh, if I play the raw sample, it's something like this. But uh, so it's I think 110 BPM, and if I prescale it to 100 BPM, it should sound different. So it is, it's a bit slower. Uh, also, you you can just uh, apply a filter to a sample to cut some frequencies. Um, and also you can play just a part of the sample, so this is like four beats uh, long, and you, you can play just one beat. Uh, and you can play one like one beat from starting from some uh, other point, so you can just create... By mixing these two, you can create some... 
strange sounds like this. Mm. Yeah, and also you can just download. So I downloaded some uh, famous uh, uh, breaks uh, from this website, and you can just uh, play around with them. Uh, yeah, and so basically, what you uh, uh, what you uh, can do is just mix some samples and uh, my library will take uh, care that, that they will be in sync. So you can play something like this. And uh, for something more modern. Uh, and also, what you can do is, um, I will just omit he uh, here, but I think I need um, oh, this. So, I uh, modeled here a simple melody from this Lean On uh, track. Uh, yeah, so I just can use uh, some sample from this uh, downloaded samples, and but it's 120 BPM, so I can prescale it to 100 BPM. It sounds uh, a bit weird, but uh, if we mix it with this uh, melody, it's, I think it sounds pretty well. Uh, yeah, and you can like I downloaded the a cappella version of the song, so you can use it also. And another uh, thing you can do because uh, yeah, this, these examples are so static that I just play some part of the song, you can uh, use some kind of live coding. Uh, but I have to just introduce some co concept because in uh, like in Clojure, all the data structures are immutable uh, by default. And if you want to some make some live coding, you need some state uh, to hold uh, the current state of the song. So in Clojure, there are some special constructs for this, the, the simplest is uh, atom. So you can just uh, create an atom holding uh, holding a map, and oh, this is just a way of uh, printing this value. Uh, so it holds the state, and then we have this function swap and re reset. Mm, so swap just takes the atom and then takes the function and argument, so this ASOC function just takes the map and creates another map with the new key, so uh, it should add uh, a second key with B and 2. Uh, so it returns here, and if we look at the state, it changes uh, also to this value. And also we can uh, reset all the, the whole atom with a new uh, map. So th in this case, I'm just overwriting uh, it to a C of value 2. Uh, yes, and uh, I also reuse the same concept. So I have these two functions, ASOC track and reset track. The reset just erase the whole track. Uh, and ASOC can be used uh, to just replace a part of the song. So, uh, in order to play, we uh, I use mm, the Leipzig have this jam function. Uh, 
uh, and it works uh, like uh, this. So it just takes the current value of the track, it plays it, and when it ends, it just reevaluates re uh, the track. So when you play the loop, you can then switch to something else, and in the next like uh, loop it would be changed uh, so maybe i would show you how how to use it uh, so we can start with this and if i change this here so it will wait to the <coughs> Okay, so you can just play around with this uh, with this concept. Uh, okay, I can have a few more minutes. So, um, so this concept of expressing this melody as uh, just a s uh, closure sequence is uh, it makes it easy to like, for example, um, integrate with MIDI uh, file notation. Uh, so uh, I have this function that just takes a MIDI file, uh, this MID, with a melody, and then just creates this uh, this sequence playable by uh, Leipzig. Uh, so I have this um, uh, here, and if I just using this. Uh <laughs> Using this instrument, I can play the, the MIDI melody. Uh, and of course, I can just mix it with, with some samples and so on. And also, uh, what is really cool um, is that you can just visualize the melody. Uh, so I created this uh, web application that just uh, takes the current state of the song and displays it as this table. Uh, so it's built with some closure script, but it uses uh, React underneath. Um, and what is uh, really cool about it, it I have this uh, demo here. Uh, so when I just uh, change the melody, it will magically update the current uh, visualization uh, of, the, of the song. So this is pretty trivial with React because I'm just sending uh, through WebSocket the, the new state and the React just knows what to update uh, in this table. Uh, and the same you can do with uh, while programming beats. It's uh, really uh, helpful to just uh, know, uh, especially when you are using this uh, half a beat or something. Uh, here, it's uh, I personally like to see uh, what it looks like in this um, in this uh, web application. So basically, it's some kind of browser-based. Uh, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, because I can also just uh, edit the notes manually by clicking this table here and play it and so on. Uh, it just has some REST API that uh, communicates with the underneath server, uh, which is running Overtone. Uh, okay, uh, so maybe I will show you some other uh, 
possibilities. So if you don't like closure, but like the concept of uh, live coding music, uh, I have this uh, list of other uh, frameworks. So the, the most important is the Super Collider because it's the, the library that Overton uses underneath. Uh, it's a C++ uh, library. It's, um, it comes with an IDE. You can then progr uh, program even some uh, UI components. Also, the, there is the Sonic Pi, uh, which is really popular. Uh, the creator uh, of Overton, Sam Aaron, is the author of this, and it's uh, it is uh, based on Ruby, uh, and he uses it is uh, use use it use it uh, to teach uh, kids uh, programming by just uh, making music. Uh, also, there is this Tidal Cycles, which is uh, pretty awesome because you are writing Haskell code uh, to make uh, drum patterns. Uh, and yeah, this all the Fox dot is in Python, so it's really easy to start to play with. And also, if you just don't want to install some software, there is this website. Uh, Clankmeister, of the author of this Leipzig, with, uh, and here you can just uh, write a code uh, and just play it here and see the result. It uh, uses uh, web audio. There is also this uh, fine tutorial how to do it. Um, okay, so the last. Uh, part of my talk uh, would be a sh short performance uh, <laughs> that I prepared.
So we have five minutes for questions. Yeah. Traditional music notation is much more expressive than ASCII art in a text file. What do you think is the next step for the DSM? Okay, so the question is uh, that the traditional music notation is uh, like more, uh, uh, you can uh, express more than this. And what is my opinion of going this DSL further? So, uh, like I don't have this much uh, music background. Uh, I think that this, uh, this, what this DSL offers now is just uh, you can recreate like 90% of pop music, uh, which is perfectly fine for me. But uh, yeah, this the, this limitation that uh, you can easily um, make something to um, like because now you have this limitation that the roll uh, notes should play one uh, after another, and this is I think. Uh, easy to, to implement, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what are the, the, the plans, but I think, uh, well, it, it should not be that, that if someone with musical background, uh, for someone with musical background, it should be easy to just extend this, this uh, DSL. And also it is nice because when you are just uh, returning the collection, you can just add another function that transforms this collection, so you don't have to integrate with this DSL. You just have, you can do your library that uh, does something. I don't know if it's good explanation. Okay. Okay, so the question is how do I, how my workflow looks like, yeah. So basically I just, um, the first step is to like recreating the, the sound. So you can easily, easily find on YouTube the tutorials that uh, how can you uh, tweak the synthesizer to make the sound from a, famous song or something, so I usually start with this. And then I just, uh, yeah, play with the melody and try to, like, uh, experiment, add some, so I just sitting, uh, my wife is mad at me because I just sitting on with my headphones and she's saying that I'm doing nothing productive. Uh, yeah, so it's lots of experimentation, I think. Uh, and yeah, I just, if I need something uh, new added to my, to these libraries, I just uh, add, but I know, I don't know it in advance what I, what I will need uh, more. So this. And also it's funny that uh, often you make some mistake in the code, but Suddenly, you, it happened that it sounds uh, really good, so... Uh, <laughs> <coughs> okay. Sorry? Syntax error, okay. So there is a possibility to kill the li live coding, just stop playing anything. Uh, also, uh, there is a possibility of making some loud uh, uh, sounds that will just break your ears. Uh, but uh, Overton has this, uh, because this uh, uh, super collider doesn't have it, Overton has this uh, like uh, some code that when it detects that sound is too loud, it will uh, just uh, turn it off, not to make you hurt. Uh, but yeah, you can just... Uh, uh, well, if, it, if the code uh, doesn't compile, I would just uh, not... Like, uh, I'm not able to replace the melody with the, uh, another uh, version, so it would, doesn't change. Uh, 
it will doesn't change uh, at all. So someone else. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the question is how can you render a track? Uh, how can you save it? Uh, so yeah, the, there is, in Overton has this uh, recording uh, functionality, so you can just uh, invoke a function that uh, tells that you want to record, then you just play and then stop and you have this WAV file. You can do some post-processing, mastering on it, but I have, so I did just for like I have a block and I just put this uh, simple uh, simple short uh, fragment. So I just create uh, a wave files like this. Okay, so I think time is up. So thank you very much. <laughs>